Jensen just arrived for welcome to Duff events in George's Mark Wicked Stadium. <laughs> <laughs>
participating in these activities will request them to leave the stadium. Good afternoon and welcome to our viewers from a warm and sunny St. George's Park where the Tuskers take on the home team, the Dalphabet Warriors. Um, the Tuskers have won the toss and have elected to bowl first.
Opening the bowling for the Tuskers from the park drive end is Mbulelo Budaza. Facing the first ball is Javeshan Pillay. First ball is harmlessly through to the keeper. Well defended by Pelé into the covers. And the Warriors are off the mark. Pelé runs the ball down to third man for a single. It's a good in-swinger to test Brietzky first up, and he defends it solidly back to the bowler. Play in a miss by Brietzky, perhaps one that stayed a bit low. That's well defended by Brietzky, a rising ball. Defends it into the covers and that brings to an end the first over. Warriors are one for no loss.
Keith Dudgeon is into the attack from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. Bowling his right arm seamers. And he'll be coming over the wicket to the left-handed Pillay. A slip in place. That's a good leave by Pelé. The ball goes straight through to the keeper. It's a good start for Dudgeon. That's a play and a miss by Pelé. Looks like that one stayed a bit low. So the two fielders out during the power play for Dudgeon is a wideish third man and a deep backward square. Another run down to third man for Pelé. That one sits up off the deck a little bit. Takes him by surprise. Shoulder of the bat. The early indications of this surface is we now start understanding why we now start understanding why the Tuskers may have decided to bowl first on this surface. It doesn't seem easy. Uh, ball seems a little erratic at the moment. Britsky back on strike. Also a whitish third man for him as well as a deep square out. Dudgeon strays slightly to the leg side. Another single through to the short fine leg, who does some good work. Pelé back on strike. <laughs> and the ball is through to the keeper. There's a play and a miss by Pelé. Um, not much movement off the deck or in the air for, for Dudgeon as opposed to Budaza who was bringing the ball back beautifully to the right-hander. The surface does just seem a bit on the slow side early on in the innings. There's a fielding change now. Third man comes up into the ring, and we've got a deep backward point for Pelé. Uh, they scuttle through for a single, and that is the end of the second over. Warriors currently four runs for no loss. Port Elizabeth has had a fair amount of rain over the last few days, and that obviously would have hampered the, the time to prep the surface for today. Budaza back into Pelé for the start of over number three. Budaza seems right on the money again. It's a good line and a good length, and Pelé defends it into uh, the leg side for no run.
Pedaza seems to be hitting a fantastic line and length here. Pelé defends it into the leg side again for no run. Some excellent fielding by Ntini, saving his team three runs. Pelé through for a single. Some more work for Antini to do at short third man, this time to the right-handed Prietzky, and they are through for another single. Pelé back on strike. Ball solidly defended into uh, the leg side. Last ball of the third over. So we've still got just the solitary slip in place for the left-handed Pedaza to both batters. And that's beautifully played off the legs. That ball will race down to the fine leg boundary for four runs. That brings to an end the third over. The Warriors are 10 for no loss. The Warriors currently playing on a surface which is closer to the new scoreboard, meaning that uh, the old stand side of the ground is the bigger side of the ground. Dudgeon back for his second over. That's well defended by Brietzky. They were looking for the single, but the fielder was on it like a flash. Nicely clipped onto the leg side by Brietzky. Always running hard looking for the second. Only one run on offer this time round. Pelé drives it hard through to Madoff. Brietzky set off for the single and had to turn around very, very quickly. A direct hit would have had him in a lot of trouble there. Good fielding. The 
midfielder responsible there was Budaza. Nice solid little straight push back to uh, Murov. No run on offer for Pelé this time round. Pelé punches nicely off the back foot. Only the single through to the deep point. And Dudgeon finishes uh, off the over with a short one to Tess Brietsky, and he is not interested, and that brings to an end uh, the fourth over. The Warriors currently 12 for no loss. The surface certainly seems to be a bit on the slow side, uh, making scoring a little difficult, but there's been some good bowling from the Tuskers and equally good batting from the Warriors up until this point. And from the park drive end, our first bowling change of the, of the afternoon, uh, Mishretwa, right arm, right arm seamer, and he'll be coming around the wicket to the left-handed Pelé. The slip has been taken out. Pushed firmly into the covers by Pelé, no run there. The slip has been taken out. And uh, the Tuskers have put in an extra cover fielder for, for the left-handed Pelé. Pelé backs away slightly to the leg side, plays a beautiful inside-out shot over extra cover for six, and that brings about our first maximum of the afternoon. Players hit that to one of the smaller areas of the ground, and it has just cleared the boundary. Mshetwa bangs one in short, and Pelé duly obliges and pulls it down to the backward square boundary for four. The previous shot that uh, Pelé played over extra cover has prompted a fielding change, with a deep point now going out, and the third man that was out on the boundary now at short third man. There seems to be a healthy crowd starting to come into this game. At St. George's, the band is getting ready. Pelé miscues one through a whitish mud on, and the pair run through, uh, the pair run two, run through for two on that. Band starting to warm up.
Pelé tries to run one down to third man, plays and misses, straight through to the keeper. Good solid drive to mid off by Pelé. Unfortunately, no runs on this occasion. That is the end of the fifth over. Warriors are 24 for no loss. We look forward to hearing the St. George's Park band once again today. They've entertained the spectators at this stadium for generations. So after four overs, after five overs, apologies, uh, Pelé is on 21, Brietzky is on two. A rather sedate start for Brietzky, but we know what he's capable of. And uh, Dudgeon into his third over. Beautiful straight drive by uh, Brietzky to the left of the mid-on fielder. He scuttles through for a single. Good cricket all round. And the band is up and running. Another play and a miss by Pelé and the ball goes through to the keeper. The St. George's Park band has certainly lightened up the vibe at St. George's Park. I'm sure the Tuskers would be happy with their power play up until this point. Unfortunate not to get any wickets, but they certainly have kept the runs down. And they're bowling to a very, very dangerous pair who can take the game away from you very, very quickly. Pelé tries to back away a little bit, give himself some room. I suspect Dudgeon saw him coming and just slightly held back his length. Ball was harmlessly played into the covers, no runs. So, three balls left of the power play. Let's see what Pelé can do. Just a leg by on offer for Pelé that, uh, this time. And two balls left of this, the sixth over. And also that means two balls left of the power play. There's a modest crowd in this, this afternoon at St. George's Park, which I'm sure will grow. But the band is thoroughly entertaining them with their first song already. Another leg by through to the man at 45 on the leg side. Uh, Brietzky will feel that he missed out there. Um, that's normally his bread and butter. The head was up a little bit there and I think that's what uh, cost him maximum runs on that occasion. Dudgeon into Pelé for the last ball or what should be the last ball of the power play. Lower ball to end the over. Pelé drives firmly through to the mid on fielder. No runs on offer that time. And that brings to an end the power play. The Warriors are 26, 27 for no loss. Um, the Tuskers would be very happy with their effort so far.
And into the attack comes the left arm orthodox of Kyle Nipper. And he is cut beautifully in front of square to the deep extra cover boundary for four runs. I'm sure he would want it to have started better. Bryatsky the better. Cheeky single, drop and run into the offside. And the two scuttle through for a very good single. Well fielded, however, Pelé was safe. Pelé loses his wicket, tries to reverse sweep the left arm orthodox Kyle Nipper. Rather unnecessary shot and he departs for, up until this point, a well played 21. Warriors are 32 for one in the third ball of the seventh over. And given how well he's played, given how the surface is playing, there really was no need for anything unorthodox. And uh, that being said, playing orthodox cricket has been a hallmark of the Warriors through this T20 campaign. They've hardly gotten out of first gear and have played some beautiful, simple cricket and uh, are log leaders for it. He'll be unhappy with himself about that. And into the crease comes Jordan Herman. He joins Matthew Bretsky. And he'll be on strike immediately. A destructive batsman, talented batsman, we all know what he can do. Perhaps just got, hasn't gotten out of gear this season. Herman off the mark immediately. Nipper bangs one in short and is pulled through to the deep square boundary for a single. Some excellent work by the fielder there. Another drag down by Nipper, duly appreciated by Bryatsky and he pulls him over the deep mid-wicket boundary for six. Nipper seems to be struggling to find his length here early on in his bowling. Of course, Matthew Bretsky doesn't need a second invitation to hit them there. Slight delay as one of the fielders looks to find the ball. The ball is back in the bowler's hand and we are ready to bowl what should be the last ball of the seventh over. Nipper strays leg side. Let's see if the umpire signals wides or leg buys. And three wides. Mr. Nipper will have to re-bowl that ball. And that's a big one. Bryatsky deposits him once again over the deep mid-wicket boundary for what is a massive six. And that brings to an end a successful over for the Warriors. As well as a successful over for the bowler in terms of the one wicket that he has taken. 
quite an expensive over from Nipper. That one has gone for 21. Bretzky moves on to 20. Herman still on one. Warriors are now 48 for one. Seven overs have been bowled. The band is in full flow. The modest crowd really enjoying what the band has to offer this early in the game. Uh, that uh, maximum from Matthew Bretzky off the last ball of Nipper's first over has exited the ground. The umpires are choosing another ball so that the match can continue. The umpires have decided on the ball that we'll use going forward and play is about to resume. There is a bowling change from the Duck Pond Pavilion end, Tando and Tini into the attack and he'll be up first to the left-handed Jordan Herman. He'll be coming around the wicket to Jordan. The field quite spread out now after the power play. We've got a third man, a rather square fine leg. We've got a deep square, a sweeper on the boundary, on the offside. Ntini into Herman. Beautiful drive through the covers by Herman. We'll only get him one run though. Briotsky back on strike. Deep square, third man. And a fine leg, also a sweeper out for him. And that's a wide. You'll have to re-bowl that one, Mr. Ntini. And that wide brings up the 50 for the Warriors. That after 7.1 overs. Miscued lofted drive by Brietsky flies over the third man onto the roof of one of the hospitality suites at St. George's Park for another maximum. Looks like the Warriors are now finding their straps. Brietsky starting to move along. Quite a tentative push into the covers by Brietsky. No run and offer this time. Risky runs one down to Whitish third man. They'll scamper through for an easy single.
Martini darts one in at the legs. It's just clipped off the pads by Herman for a single into the deep square boundary. That is excellent cricket by Matthew Brietzky. Simple little drop and run in, into the covers and off they go for a single. That brings to an end the eighth over. Warriors are now 59 for one. So after 26 overs, the worry after five, six overs, the Warriors were 26 at 25 for one. Three overs later, they're on 59. So they've certainly upped the run rate. Current run rate sitting at 7.4 runs to the over. The Warriors are pacing themselves beautifully. Interesting bowling change by the by the skipper, by the Tusker skipper as Mfetwa is back into the attack. From the end he bowled from previously. Uh, he's first over having gone for 12. And he'll be coming over the wicket to the right-handed Brietzky. And my goodness, Brietzky does love the leg side boundaries. He's just deposited Mshetwa over, the, over a deep backward square boundary for another maximum towards Castle Corner. Such an easy pickup. Bowler's definitely under pressure now. How do you protect the rest of the over? Discussions between the bowler and his fielders. Fielding change as uh, fine leg comes up into the circle. And we have long off, uh, mid off dropping to the long off boundary. Change of tactic. You'll probably be bowling them slightly fuller and straighter. And Brietzky hits another one out of the stadium for another maximum over a wideish long on into Park Drive. New balls, please. Mflet was struggling a bit here with his line and his length. Probably should be bowling them a little fuller to bring his posters down on the boundary into play. Nonetheless, Brietzky moves on to 40. Looks relatively untroubled. Herman spectating from the non-striker's end. So we have a ball, bowler is ready, batter is almost ready, current score 71 for one, 8.2 overs bowled. Mshletwa about to bowl his third ball of the ninth over to Matthew Brietzky. Already 12 runs off this over. Mshletwa finds his Line and length, Brietzky defends solidly through to the cover fielder, no run there. Bredsky drives hard through to the man on the sweeper boundary on the offside. Slight misfield by him allows the pair to scamper through for a second.
Britsky drives hard down to the long run boundary and they are through for a single. Left-handed Jordan Herman on strike. He's largely been a spectator in this partnership so far, watching Brietsky do his thing from the non-striker's end. Mshlechua will be coming around the wicket to the left-handed Herman. Strong offside field, lots of gaps on the leg side. And he strays leg side. Ball is clipped off the pads, through to a st straightish deep square, and the pair scamper through for two. That brings to an end. Over number nine, Warriors 76 for one. Matthew Brietsky is on 43, Jordan Herman on five. Five bowlers used so far by the Tuskers in the nine overs bowled. And we see another change, Kirtland Manicum, and he'll be coming on from the Duck Bond Pavilion end. First ball from Manicum played through to the deep square boundary. The pair scamper through for two runs. Manicum bowling his right arm off breaks around the wicket to the right handed Matthew Bretsky. Another single through to. Um, cow corner. Very clear plan by the bowler to have the batters hit them to the long, to the big side of the ground over here. Very strong offside field with plenty of gaps on the leg side. Manicum stays around the wicket to the left-handed Herman. That's well bowled. No run on offer this time. Herman drives the ball through to the sweeper on the offside. The pair go through for a single. It's an interesting ploy by the bowler. When the left hander is on strike and his leg side is the short side of the field. It's almost like he's guaranteed a single down there where potentially they could run two if the gaps were on the offside to the left-hander. Manny come in. Here's key goes aerial. Ball fielded by long on. Pair have run through for two. Last ball of the 10th over. And that brings up the 50-run partnership for Brietzky and Herman. Brietzky drives into the offside, uh, to the leg side. Some good work done to the right of Longon. Another two runs added to the partnership, and that brings up 50 runs for Matthew Brietzky. He, he has hardly given a chance in this innings. He has paced himself beautifully. In the opening partnership, he was a spectator for most of his time with Pelé. And uh, he's coming to his own beautifully as the innings has progressed. The 
10 overs bowled, 84 for one. Things looking ominous for the Tuskers here. So, Ntini is back into the, into the attack this time from the park drive end. And he'll be bowling around the wicket to the left-handed Jordan Herman. Once again, quite a strong offside field. We've got a deep square, we've got a fine leg, and we've got a third man out on the boundaries, as well as a sweeper on the offside. Long on now drops to the boundary as well. That is beautifully dug out by Herman. Very good ball by Ntini right in the block hole. And the pair scamper through for another single. Ntini employs the same field to the right-handed Priyatsky. It's a very good ball by Ntini, full and wide. Priyatsky plays and misses. Ball through to the keeper, no runs on offer. Another full ball driven straight through to the cover fielder on the offside. No runs on offer. Ntini seems to be employing a death bowling line and length here to Briatsky in this over. So far he's done well. And he's into Briatsky for the fourth ball of this over. Another ball full and wide in the block hole, just a single through to the extra cover fielder. In the context of the last four overs, this is a brilliant over so far by Hintini. He's got two balls left in this over, let's see if he can finish strong. He's into the left-handed Jordan Herman. Herman pushes the ball out firmly to very straightish mid-wicket. No run on offer this time. Herman backs away, gives himself room, drives it firmly through to the Mudo fielder. Unfortunately, there's no run and offer for him. That is the end of the 11th over. Warriors are 86 for one. Matthew Brietsky on 51. Jordan Herman, seven runs. Manicum in the attack for his second over. Bowling his off breaks, right arm round the wicket to the right-handed Matthew Bredsky. Bredsky advances. The pair are through for a single. Manicum fields his own bowling.
Herman drives down to Longhoff for a single. St. George's Park bathed in glorious sunshine. The region has seen a few days of quite heavy rains. So it is lovely to see the sun out, some cricket being played. Grietzky drives down to Whitish long on. Another easy two runs. Brietzky through for another single into the leg side. Uh, the keeper Shackleton does the work. Very clear what the bowler is trying to do here. Trying to get the right hander to hit the ball. Leg side, straight and leg side. And so far so good. The sweeper on the offside to the right hander has had very little work to do this afternoon against the right handed off break of Manicum. Jordan Herman on strike. Herman advances down the track, slices one aerially through to uh, Deep Square who takes it on the bounce and Herman is through for another single. Be it sketchy, but a single nonetheless. Brietzky drives hard down to the long off boundary. The pair run brilliantly and complete two runs off the last ball of the 12th over. Warriors on 94 for one, Brietzky on 57, Jordan Herman on nine. Keith Dudgeon, the pick of the bowlers for the Tuskers so far. His three overs didn't net him a wicket, but only went for five runs during the power play overs. Nipper struggled to find his line and length in his first over and went for 21. He did get the wicket of Javesh and Pillay in that over. Mshetwa has struggled. He's gone for 29 in his two overs. Manikam has done a decent job. 16th in his two overs. Budaza bowled brilliantly and only went for seven in his two overs. Ntini back into the attack. His two previous overs have only costed 13 runs. Herman miscues an attempted scoop through to point. Scampers through for a single. Changing the field here as the third man drops down to the boundary. And Longhoff comes into the middle position for Matthew Bredsky. Seems that was the double bluff. He bowled it full and straight once again on almost on the wide line. Well bowled Tando and Tini. Clearly some thought going into every ball that Ntini is bowling. And he's done a good job for his team so far. Miscue by Brietzky, fielded by the midwicket fielder. No run. Tini bowling brilliantly, banging that one into the deck as hard as he could, and it just held up a little bit, 
and that's what caused the discomfort for Briatsky. Ntini persists with his block hole full deliveries wide on the off wide on the offside line. and uh, Briatsky drives it through to the sweeper for a single. That is absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Brietzky has just dispatched Ntini over the over a wide long on for another six, for another ball landing in Park Drive. Let's see if we can retrieve this. From where we are sitting, it looks like it's gone into the yards across the road. New balls, please. Just a reminder that for the right-handed batter facing a bowler bo running in from the park drive end, his leg side is the short side of the ground. And this is where Brietzky has scored all of his boundaries so far. Ntini has bowled beautifully up until this point. A very clear ploy from him to keep the ball away from Brietzky's uh, leg side. Unfortunately, just misdirected on that occasion, pays the price in the form of a maximum by Brietzky. Excellent little contest this between batter and bowler. Let's see what Ntini does on the last ball of this, his third over. Some discussions in the field as to Brietzky drives and drives hard through to Midoff. Well executed, Ntini, well played Brietzky, and that brings to an end the 13th over. Quite an eventful one. Ntini has gone for 22 in his three overs. Matthew Brietzky on 66. Jordan Herman on 9. The Warriors are currently 104 for 1. 13 overs having been bowled. This partnership is currently on 72, of which Jordan Herman has contributed 9. It shows you how dominant Matthew Brietzky has been right through this innings after the departure of Pelé. Manikam continues. This is his third over through to Brietzky. It's a drag down. Brietzky pulls that one through to the cow corner boundary for six that was a good clean hit as that is to the long side of the boundary somewhere between 75 and 80 meters good clean hit by Bredsky Manikam gets his length slightly wrong and is punished for it score moves on to one one zero for one Brietzky miscues one and is caught by the bowler. He departs for a well-played 72. Ironically, his only miscued shot has cost him his wicket. He'd be disappointed. However, the Tuskers are delighted at the fall of Matthew Brietzky's wicket. Well played, Matthew Brietzky. Just goes to show what a tough surface this is to bet on. You're never quite in. And to the crease comes Patrick Kruger. I'm sure, I'm sure he'd look to settle quickly and have a go. Apologies. It is not Patrick Kruger. In fact, it is J.P. King into the crease.
he'll be facing the right hand, uh, the right arm off break of Manikam, who will still be coming around the wicket to him. J.P. King is a batter who can hit the ball hard and hit it a long way. He would look to fire quite early during his innings. It just pushes that first delivery from Manikam back to the bowler. No runs on offer there. King advances down the track, plays the ball beautifully th through to the extra cover fielder. No run and offer, almost a misfield. But all's well that ends well. No run off that ball. Two balls left in Manicum's third over. Well driven down the ground by King. Longoff does good work. Gets the ball back before the two can look to go for two runs. So King is off the mark. Herman back on strike. And the score is Nelson for two. One ball left in the 14th over. The band in full flow. Manicum strays into the pads of... Herman and he just turns it around the corner through to square leg for a single and that brings to an end the 14th over. The Warriors are well positioned at 112 for two going at a rate of eight runs and over and we've got six overs left. Some discussions between captain and bowler captain quite animated in marshalling his fielders. And back into the attack, Mbulelo Budaza. And he'll be coming from the park drive end. And he starts with a wide. Herman would feel he missed out on that occasion. That was basically a free hit for him. First two overs that Budaza bowled, there was good swing on offer for him. He hit good lines, good lengths. Herman hits hard out through to the long on fielder. To his left, he's got quite a bit of work to do, which allows the pair through for two. The Tuskers have employed pretty much the same field after the power play. Herman plays and misses. Ball through to the keeper. Batters having a quick chat to each other in the middle. Lower ball bouncer, and that is a wide. 
that was way over the head of Jordan Herman. And that is also one for the over. The next ball in this over that, it, that bounces and goes shoulder height or higher will be called a no ball by the umpires. Herman miscues one over the head of the straightish midwicket fielder who thought he was in the money there for a second. However, the ball just evaded him. It was slightly too hard for him and over his head. Chance gone begging. Herman struggling with his timing this afternoon. The surface is not helping him and his style of play. Advances down the track. Ooh. Herman advanced down the track. Plays it on drive. Pass the bowler to the long on boundary for two. Long on fielder almost made a hash of it. However, all's well that ends well. Just the two runs off that delivery. The two wides in this over has given this over the feeling that it is a very long one and it's about to become longer with Herman's bat seeming seemingly broken. Onto the field comes some replacement willow for him. Tries one, checks the pickup, is happy with it. Let's get on with business. All right, we're ready to go again. Two balls left in this, the 15th over. Fielding change, it would seem, for the last two. Up into the circle comes the third man into uh, 45 on the offside. Herman backs away, gives himself room, drives firmly through wideish long off, and that is a very good shot for four runs. All along the ground, maybe he needed a new bat all along. Moves he Herman score along to 20. Just a slight delay in retrieving the ball. We now have the ball. Umpire does a quick check. Mr. Bedaza, you are good to go, sir. Misdirected slower ball by Budaza. Uh, Herman would feel he's missed out. He's hit that straight to the man at 45 who misfields and the pair scamper through for a single. An informed Jordan Herman would feel that he should get maximum for a ball like that. And that brings to an end the 15th over. The Warriors are 125 for two. Jordan Herman is on 21. JP King on one. Manikam Tiboli's last over from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. He's bowled well so far. Picked up the wicket. Very important wicket of Brietzky. And he's into the left-handed Jordan Herman. This partnership now worth 15. Herman tries to reverse sweep Manicum. Misses it by a country mile ball safely through to the keeper.
Herman departs, he miscues a long hop, top edges it, and the bowler completes his own wicket. Good work by Manicum, had to cover a lot of ground. For a second there, the keeper didn't know where the ball was, and uh, Herman departs for 21. He just seemed unsettled and restless, Jordan Herman at the crease. His timing of the ball wasn't great. Uh, he'll be unhappy with himself, with himself, but he departs for 21. Warriors are now 125 for three. Tuskers would feel if they can take one or two more wickets, they would restrict the Warriors on the surface where it is difficult to get yourself in or it takes some time to get yourself in before scoring freely as Brietzky showed us. And into the crease comes Bayer Swanepoel. We know what he can do. Four deliveries left in this fourth over of Manicum. Swanepoel defends the ball into the covers, no runs there. Nicely defended into the leg side by Swanepoel and he's off the mark. Fielding completed by the wicket keeper Shackleton. King turns one round the corner, fielding done by the 45 on the leg side, and he is through for a single. It's interesting to note that the boundary riders on the short side of the field towards the new scoreboard have had very little work to do today. King plays a sweep shot through to um, a very sort of square square leg and um, I thought he was off for a single and was sent back by his partner. It's almost as if he didn't know the fielder was there and uh, that brings to an end the 16th over. Warriors are 127 for three. As mentioned the boundary riders on the short side of the ground towards uh, Castle Corner have had very little work to do this afternoon. Um, along the ground, the balls have either sailed over their heads out of the stadium or hasn't come to them at all. Back into the attack is Kyle Nipper from the park drive end, looking to see if he can make amends after his first over. Went for 21. Certainly a better start by Kyle. And that ball is defended solidly into the offside. Extra cover does the fielding. The King is through for a single. At the crease currently, Bayer Swanepoel for the Warriors on strike. JP King at the non-striker's end. King is on one. Swanepoel is... Swanepoel on one, sorry. And King is on three. JP King plays a beautiful shot over long on for maximum. Long on could do nothing but watch as the ball sailed over his head, smashing into the advertising boards in the Graham Pollock Pavilion. He punches firmly off the back foot. This time long on has some work to do. Swanna pulled through for a single. At, at this rate, the Warriors are eyeing a total of somewhere between 170 and 180 runs.
and King follows suit. Hits one straight over the head of Long On for another maximum. He's put away a low full toss there. Kyle Nipper still seems to be struggling with his lines and his lengths. King advances down the track, miscues one through to long off. Quite a bit of work for him to do. King earns himself another two runs. One ball left in the 17th over. King slices one through orthodox point down to the deep point on the boundary for a single. And that brings to an end the 17th over. The Warriors are 144 for three. Tando and Tini back into the attack, this time from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. And he will look to continue with that mindset of death bowling. He bowled beautifully from the other end, full wide on, on, the, on the wide line. And it was difficult to score off him. The captain and bowler having a conversation about field placings and what the plan for this over is. JP King on strike. Long on fielder for him. Deep square. We've got a sweeper on the offside boundary and a third man. Point, extra cover, mid wicket, and 45 on the leg side. So, no ball, full toss. Ball is hit up in the air. The fielders don't know. Good awareness by the batters. Oh, when there's a misfield by the wicket keeper, Shackleton. And so that, no ball, has cost the Tuskers four runs. And the Warriors have earned themselves four runs there. That is excellent awareness by the Warriors, by the Warriors batters. They saw the call from the keeper, fr from the umpire early. Excellent awareness. Captain and Bolo once again discussing the next ball, which is a free hit. Of course, the field is allowed to change because there was a run. Swanapool on strike. My money is on Tini putting this one in the block hole, full and wide. And that certainly was the attempt. Didn't quite hit the length that he wanted. Swanapool mishits and plays a Chinese cut through to the man at 45 on the leg side and the pair run through for a single. Not too much damage from that result from that no ball and the resulting free hit. Once again, the St. George's Band has not failed to entertain us through the afternoon. JP King attempts a reverse scoop and earns the team a leg by. Well, bold Tando and Tini, he's taken the pace off that one a little bit. Didn't quite execute on the block hole Yorker there. And that brings up 150 runs for the Warriors in 17.2 overs. And Tini into Swanepoel. Once again, full and wide, almost on that wide line, well bowled Tando and Tini. Bayers through for a single. He's hit that firmly to extra cover.
Another pace off delivery by Tando Antini. JP King backs away to give himself a little bit of room and plays and misses. Antini back to his mark quickly. Another pace of delivery by Tando Antini. King backs away to give himself room and only manages to edge the ball through to the man at 45 on the offside. To the short third man who takes an easy catch. King departs for 15. And uh, the catch is completed by Kyle Nipper. Warriors are now 151 for four. This has been an excellent display of death bowling by Ntini. He's varied his pace beautifully. He's executed the wide full delivery beautifully today, not just in this over. And into the crease comes Patrick Kruger. After this year's SA20, Patrick Kruger has become a household name in South African cricket. What a unit he is, and we know that he can hit a long ball. He's got one ball to navigate from Ntini. Field remains the same for the new batter. Ntini strays leg side and umpire calls wide. So in fact, Patrick Kruger has to face another ball from Tando Ntini. Kruger pushes the ball through to point and scampers through for a single and that brings to an end the 18th over. The Warriors are 153 for four. The wicket of JP King fell in this last over. Kruger has just gotten off the mark he's, and he's on one run. Bayer on pull on 10. The Warriors still very much on track for that 170-180 target. Budaza back into the attack from the park drive end. He will look to hit his straps immediately in this over. Bowled two brilliant overs with the new ball at the beginning of the innings. Came back for an over later on. Struggled a little bit. And now he'll look to make amends. And he's into the right-handed Patrick Kruger. field employed for Patrick Kruger is very much the same as it has been for most of the batters through the day with the exception of uh, the straightish midwicket and they've opted for a man at 45 on the leg side as well as a square leg no midwicket in place sliced over the top of backward point and that'll run away for four down to a whitish third man boundary. Very clearly Budaza is looking to go full and wide there. Patrick Kruger up to the task. Makes good contact and slices it over um, backward point. Consultation again between captain and bowler. Patrick Kruger getting some encouragement from the St. George's Park band. Petta yo lekka dung. Patrick Kruger times the ball beautifully, driving it through the offside, finding the sweeper on the boundary. Just a single for him. The band fully behind Patrick Kruger and the Warriors. Better your lekker dung. Score moves on to 158 for four.
Swanepoel edges one through to the man at short third man and takes a good catch running back. Warriors are now 158 for the loss of five. The Tuskers would feel that they've done an excellent job in the last five overs by just pegging back the Warriors. Every wicket has slowed down the rate and has slowed down the momentum a little bit that the Warriors were, were building up. Still not an easy track to bat on, not an easy surface to play on. You have to play yourself in. It becomes easier the more time you spend at the crease. And of course the batsman coming in now, Mr. Kleshile, will have not much time to get going. One can see by the consultations between captain and bowler that there's thought going into every delivery that the Tuskers are bowling. This is an attempt at Kashile will be on strike. There are three balls left in this, the 19th over. Changing the field now for Kleshile as the short third man drops down to the boundary. In fact, he hasn't dropped all the way to the boundary. He's hovering somewhere between, halfway between the boundary and where short third man would, would field. And he's immediately called into action as Kleshile plays one down to the third man fielder. Score moves on to 159 for five. And Kashile or Q, as he is more affectionately known, is off the mark. Kruger tries quite an unorthodox little scoop or paddle. However, it's always going to be tough doing it from sixth stump outside off stump. And the ball goes through harmlessly to the keeper. Pat Kruger, of course, plays beautifully when he plays straight down the ground. Probably would have been better suited there looking to go straight over the bowler's head. And another swing and a miss by Patrick Kruger. And he looks to be eyeing, in that, on that occasion, the wideish long on boundary, which of course is the short boundary. And uh, that brings to an end the 19th over. The Warriors are 159 for five. Uh, they've lost their way ever so slightly here and might end up roughly 10 runs short of where they would have liked to have been after 20 overs. The two batters in deep discussion over there on how to maximize this last over. Keith Dudgeon back into the attack for his last over and for the last over of this innings. Dudgeon's figures so far. In his three overs, he's gone for a miserly five runs. Bowled exceptionally well at the top of the innings with the new ball in partnership with Budaza. And he's into Kleshile. Kleshile plays a Scoop doesn't time it as well as he would have liked to. Some excellent work down on the boundary by Budaza. Looks to have saved the boundary. And indeed has Kashile asking to confirm. And it's just the two runs. 
excellent fielding by the bowler who's just bowled an over. Tashile well within his rights to ask. Patrick Kruger playing a miss. Just a length ball should have done better. I think Patrick Kruger is trying to hit these balls too square. He's brilliant at hitting the ball straight back over the bowler's head. And it looks like he's eyeing, even to the long side of the, of the ground, he's eyeing the long on boundary. where perhaps he should be eyeing the long off boundary or straight back over the bowler's head. And uh, another scoop attempted by Patrick Kruger, which results only in a leg by. Warriors are 163 for five. We have three legal deliveries left in the first innings. Keith Dudgeon doing the business so far in this last over for his team. Another attempted scoop by Kashile. There's an appeal for a court behind. Quite a confident appeal by bowler and keeper. Umpires say not out. I complimented the Warriors early on in their innings for just playing orthodox cricket through this competition and it's serving them well. Perhaps the message was lost. These two batters are trying unorthodox cricket shots when orthodox cricket would do the job for them and serve them better at this point in the innings on what is a slow surface. That's a wide by Dudgeon. He'll have to re-bowl that. Score moves on to 164 for five. He'd be disappointed with himself. He's bowled brilliantly up until this point. Still though, he has only gone for nine runs in his 3.4 overs. Chile plays a beautiful reverse scoop and it clears the boundary of a third man for six. So it seems third time lucky for Snetebe Kleshile. That is the third attempt at that shot and he has succeeded handsomely. That moves the Warriors to 170 for five. There's one ball left in the innings. Well bowled Keith Dudgeon as he darts it in Yorker length hitting leg stump and the three of them complete and the two batters complete three runs there is now misfield and they scamper through for a fourth can you believe it what should have been a run out at the non-strikers end has resulted in an additional run the Warriors end on 174 for five Tuskers have the Tuskers bowled beautifully in the power play. 
restricting the Warriors to 26 for one after six overs. However, lost their way somewhat, allowed the Warriors back in. Warriors ended up on 174 for five. It could have been worse for the Tuskers had it not been for some excellent death bowling by Tando Ntini, Mbulela Budaza, and the last over by Keith Dudgeon. 175 is the number. That's what the Tuskers need to win this match. We'll be back with you for the start of the second innings.
season campaigner Cameron Delport. Swanna pull immediately around the wicket to him. A slip in place. Ball firmly struck to deep point, deep cover point on the boundary. Delport off the mark. One slip in place for both of these batters with a very, very tight, straight, short third man. Almost a fly slip to both of these batters. Swanapal hits the pad of Rapulana and he is through for a leg bye. The band seems to have taken a break. Things have gone rather quiet around St. George's without the band. Swanapal in for his third. The, interesting, the slip is now out of place. Delport defends the ball into the covers, through for an easy single. The slip that was in place for the previous ball that Delport faced has now moved to a backward point. Rapulana on strike, slip still in place for him with a deep backward point. Very interesting field placing by the Warriors. And that straightish short third man almost in business. That almost fly slip position as Rapulana flashes at one, takes a thick outside edge and flies down to the vacant third man boundary. Just over the head of that fly slip come straight third man. That moves the Tuskers along to eight runs so far in this over. There is one ball to come. Sonapal hits the pad uh, again. The pair scurry through for a leg by. Nine for none after the first over. Very, very interesting observation by the Warriors to remove the slip for Dalport as Swanapal has run in and there isn't much swing on offer for him this afternoon. J.P. King to open the bowling from, along with Bayer Swanepoel from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. He'll be bowling his off breaks around the wicket to the right-hander. Very similar tactic employed by the Tuskers, basically saying, hit me to the long side of the ground. Two fielders out, deep square, and a cow corner. Beautiful shot. Beautiful lofted straight drive, one bounce into the advertising boards through the vacant long off region. Mid off is very, very square. And so that has comfortably beaten him to his right. Rapulana advances, the bowler sees him coming and drags back his length, and it's a simple tap through to point for a single. The band now slowly making their way back to their positions.
Del Porto on strike. He def pushes the ball into the covers. No run there. Del Porto punches off the back foot and picks out the long on, long off, and that'll be a single. The two fielders out during the power play for Cameron Dalport is a cow corner and a long off. Rapalana backs away to give himself room to cut that through the offside. Plays and misses. A half stifled appeal by the Warriors keeper, Kashile. An extra cover now into position to make sure the over is protected. A little push through the leg side to a wideish Madon. Rapalana through for another single. That brings to an end the second over. Tuskers going along nicely at 16 for no loss. Swanapool back from the park drive in. Rapolano facing up against him. Rapolana hits it straight to Mudon and departs for 11. <laughs> Van Heerden completes what could have been a very tricky catch looking into the sun. Uh, Rapolana miscues on that occasion. Once again, just an indication of the two-paced nature of the, of the surface that we're seeing here today. When the Warriors batted, they showed us that occupying the crease is very important. In comes Shackleton. And he will be on strike. Swanapool stray slightly down the leg side to Shackleton first up. Umpire signals wide. Five balls still to come in this in the third over. It would seem as though Swanapool's MO here is to be very tight, attack the stumps. Ball is edged through to our uh, very straight short third man and the pair complete a single. An observation from the Warriors during their innings is that there were very few balls that they skied. And this is testament to the work that coach Robin Peterson has done, which started two or three seasons ago where there's been a big focus on contact points, especially on the surfaces that the Warriors would mostly play on down at the coast. And that is a maximum. Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Delport dispatches Swanapool over wide, long on for six. Well picked up by Cameron Delport. Just hit through the line on that occasion. Swanapool slightly over pitching on that occasion.
another slight delay while the ball is being retrieved. The Warriors, the Dofferbed Warriors have stood out this season for their simple brand, simple but effective brand of cricket that they've played during this competition. The band is back in full swing. So we are unable to retrieve that ball and out comes the third umpire with the box of balls. St. George's Park, of course, especially Park Drive, notorious for having balls dispatched in there. The schools across the road must collect quite a few balls from matches. So the Warriors seem to have a very, very clear plan as to how they want to go about defending their 174. On that occasion, Bayer Swanepoel got his length slightly wrong and was duly dispatched over wide-ish long on for six by Cam Dalport to the short bound, shortest boundary on the field. Swanepoel back to his very tight line and that hard length and slide inside edge onto the thigh pad and the pair scamper through for a single. Swanepoel strays onto the legs flicked off the legs and, and some excellent fielding by the deep square boundary boundary rider and he saves a certain boundary Bayer Swanepoel definitely a yard or two quicker than the Tuskers bowlers might make it easier to score with the ball coming on to bat a little easier in these conditions. Oh, that's a beaut by Bayer's Swanepoel. Hits the deck and leaves the batter. And that brings to an end the third over. No run scored off that last ball. 27 for one after three are the AET Tuskers going at a nice flush square nine runs and over. Into the attack comes Alfred Matua, also known as Harmison. And he's into the attack from the Duck Bond Pavilion end. Also another bowler who hits the deck hard, bowls the ball into the surface, can be quite effective down at St. George's Park. Alfred Matua on the money first up. Ball is punched on the back foot out to the vacant point region. Cameron Dalport runs through for a single. So once again, deep backward square and a sweeper out on the offside. Those are the two fielders out during the power play, both to the right-hander and to the left-hander. Clear indication of the lengths that the Warriors are looking to bowl. Shackleton turns one around the corner. The man at 45 on the leg side does the business and he's through for a single.
it's a wild swing and a miss by Cam Delport. The ball goes through to the keeper on the bounce. It certainly does seem slightly easier to play the quicker bowlers on the surface than it does your slower or pace off bowlers. Delport slashes at that one and it's on the bounce through to our sweeper on the offside. Another single on the board. That moves Cameron Delport along to 12. Shackleton is on four. And Shackleton is on strike again against Alfred Harmison Mutua. Shackleton hits that straight to mid wicket, who does the business. No single on offer there. Shackleton backs away to the leg side to give himself some room. A little early on the back away, Matua saw him coming and pushes it, darts it into the body. Um, gets the thigh pad as the ball goes through to the keeper. There was a half-hearted appeal by keeper and bowler. And the umpire signaled correctly. Thigh pad, that brings to an end. The fourth over, good over by Matua. Cost him and his team only three runs, and uh, the total right now is 34 1. Four overs have been bowled. Swan pull into his third over to Delport. Delport advances once again, slashes him over deep extra cover for, for six. That is a very good cricket shot. Delport obviously eyeing the shortest boundary on the field. Swanepoel would feel that he would probably have to be tighter in his line to the left-handed Cam Delport, who, if given any room, can freeze arms and hit that ball through the offside to where the shorter boundaries are. Delport this time overcompensates with his line and his length. Bangs in a short one and Delport dispatches him behind square on the leg side as he pulls him for a boundary four. Delport moving along nicely now. He's on 22 runs. This partnership is worth 24. As was the case with the Warriors in the early, in, in the early parts of the innings. One batter took the lead and the other was a spectator for most of the partnership. And we have found the ball that was hit away early on. But we continue with the new ball. That time Swanepoel hits his line and his length, very tight, back of a length. Delport defends, bowler fields, and he's back to his mark. Three balls left in this over. Delport skies one, and they complete two as the extra cover fielder does the work. Already in this innings of the Tuskers, quite a few balls that have been skied and not timed well. Talport advances, hits the ball straight to the, to the mid on field and is through for what is quite a comfortable single in the end. Score moves along to 43. We've got one ball left in the fifth over. 
definitely a stronger showing in the power play by the AET Tuskers than the Warriors. Swanepoel finishes off the over with a beautiful delivery that just holds, it, holds its line just back of a length. Shackleton plays and misses. Ball goes through to the wicketkeeper harmlessly. And that takes us through to the end of the fifth over. The AET Tuskers in response to the, worry, to the Dalphabet Warriors 174 for 5 of 43 for 1. Five overs in. Alfred Matua continues from the Duck Bond Pavilion end. as the St. George's Park Band keeps us entertained. Delpot advances down the track to Matua first ball and pulls him over straightish deep mid wicket for one bounce. Yes, for one bounce four, and Cam Dalport is clearly targeting the short boundary and is very clearly trying to put the bowlers under pressure, and he has done so. Run out opportunity. Oh, Alfred Matua fluffs an opportunity for an easy run out as the non-striker was nowhere close to his ground. A slightly better throw would have helped his cause, but a slight misfield by him and the batter was able to get back and make his ground. Gets his man the next ball as Dalport holds out to extra cover. A nothing shot really. Tried to punch him off the back foot. The pace off options clearly are what does or what's working for the Warriors, for the Dalphabet Warriors at the moment. Excellent catch completed by Pelé. Running back, had to look over his shoulder and dive, put in the dive. Excellent. That takes the AET Tuskers to 47 for 2, 5.3 overs bold, and that is in response to the 174 for the loss of 5 wickets posted by the Dalphabet Warriors at St. George's Park. While the runs have flowed freely for the AET Tuskers as opposed to the Dalphabet Warriors in the first uh, six overs. The uh, Dalphabet Warriors definitely played the contact points much better than the AET Tuskers have done so far. The surface is slow, it's too paced. While there have been opportunities to hit through the line and get boundaries, for the most part, one has to be rather circumspect and make sure that the ball is being played right underneath the eyes. Alphabet Warriors slightly ahead on that score at the moment. And into the attack is into join Shackleton at the crease is Kumalo. Matua starts with an awkward length into the body and off they go for a leg by, fielding done by the point fielder. Mundli Kumalo, still not off the mark. Another lofted little flick off the legs by Shackleton. Um, 
evades the mid wicket fielder and they are through for a single. That moves the AET Tuskers on to 49 for 2, 5.5 overs bold. Beautiful afternoon at St. George's Park as the shadow starts coming over the field. And a play and a miss by Mondli Kumalo. Beautiful delivery by uh, Alfred Matua. He's bowled well so far in his two overs. 49 for two, six overs bowled. That brings to an end the AET Tuskers power play. This was the critical stage where the Warriors started accelerating after being roughly 25, 26 for one after the first six overs. They uh, scored quite briskly after the power play. Brietzky climbing into the bowlers that particularly bowled from uh, the park drive in. And Brietzky also, much like Cam Dalport, really targeting the short boundaries. So if the Warriors can get the Tuskers to look to, to force, force the Tuskers to score their runs to the long side of the, to the long parts of the boundary, that, that'll make life easier for them in defending their 174. And into the attack is Sumetu. And Shackleton has turned him round the corner down to the, down to the fine leg fielder for a single. Marlow finally off the mark, gentle little dink into the leg side field, and he's off for a single. The new bowler in the attack, of course, is Sias Metu, left arm orthodox, and he is bowling around the wicket to both left and right hander. Shackleton almost in trouble as he just gently lofts one past the bowler, and the ball races down to the Long on boundary for a single. The AET Tuskers are now on 52 for two, six and a half overs bold. A potential finger bender hit straight back past Sumetu. Uh, takes his finger and there's a chance gone begging for the Duffer Bed Warriors. Shackleton pulls Sumetu out to the cow corner boundary. Uh, Sinatembe Kleshile quite animated with his fielder that threw that ball in. Not quite sure why. Sumetu strays in his line and that is a leg side wide. He will have to re-bowl that ball. Clearly he's frustrated with himself. Kamalu backs away, gives himself room. Runs that ball down to the short third man for an easy single. Brings to an end the seventh over. AET Tuskers are 56 for two. And a bowling change from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. Nielan van Heerden into the attack to bowl his right arm seam. And he'll be coming around the wicket to the left-handed Mondli Kumalo.
Van Heerden starts with a short one into the body. It almost seemed as if Kamala wanted to take evasive action and get out of the way. He gloves it safely into the leg side field towards square leg and, and gets a single for his efforts. Very easy, simple bowling action that Van Heerden has. Nice and easy and relaxed into the crease. Shackleton missed times that delivery straight through to extra cover. No single on offer this time. Oh, and that is a wide down the leg side. Van Heerden just seemed to be struggling here with something at the crease. Not sure if it's his run-up that he's feeling uncomfortable with or if there's an, an actual hazard, perhaps a foot mark from the previous innings that he's not happy with. But he doesn't seem particularly happy at the moment. Struggling a bit with his rhythm perhaps. Bang that one into the surface. It's a miscute pull. Pesile underneath it does the job. And that is the end of Shackleton. And Tuskers, AET Tuskers are now 58 for three. It would certainly seem as though this is a surface to hit. To hit, the, to, to hit the deck very hard. Bowl heavy balls. Bowl the ball into the surface as much as you can. And the deck will assist the bowlers from there on. Cameron Shackleton departs for eight runs. To the crease comes the skipper, Michael Erlang, a cricketer who's been around for a very long time. Highly experienced. He's been around the domestic circuit and first class cricket for a long, long time, Michael Erlang. Once again, tight line into the body of, of Michael Adlunk, and he turns it around the corner down to a uh, short third man. However, he's not off the mark as that is a leg by signaled by the umpire. Tight line again into the body goes uh, goes Nielen van Heerden. It's a direct hit. Direct hit by the mid-wicket fielder. However, batsman looked safe. Good single by Monte Kamalo. Very well run. Very well fielded by the fielder at uh, mid-wicket. Bayer Swanepoel. And that is a wide. Strays down the leg side does uh, Nielen van Heerden. He'll have to re-bowl that. Would have been the last ball of the over. 
just not quite settling. Bangs one in short. And Adelung dispatches him to the deep mid-wicket boundary for four. Just evaded the, uh, the mid-wicket fielder. However, it was hit too firmly for him. That takes the total to 65 for three after eight. Sametu continues from the park drive end. Bowling his left arm orthodox around the wicket to the left-handed Kumalo. There's a play and a miss as Kumalo backs away, trying to cut that through the offside. Little, little quicker by Sumetu, darted in slightly flatter as well. Kamalu goes aerial against Sumetu. Ball gets to the cow fielder on one bounce. However, there's a slight misfield from him which allows the batters to scuttle through for a second. Same fielder at the cow corner called into play. Just a single this time to Mondli Kamalu. Erlang cuts the ball beautifully. The extra cover fielder tries in vain to cut that ball off, but the work is eventually done by Long On, and uh, Erlang earns himself two runs with a cut in front of square down to the deep extra cover boundary. Next ball is hit straight to our straightish mid wicket. No runs on offer there. This is the last ball of the ninth over. Sumetu going about his business quite quickly. Simple little dink into uh, the leg side field into the vacant square leg region. Another single to Michael Erlang. And that brings to an end the ninth over. The AT Tuskers are 71 for the loss of three wickets after nine overs. This game is nicely poised, beautifully poised. 71 for 3 by the AET Tuskers in response to the Darfabet Warriors 174 for 5 in their allotted 20 overs. The required run rate now sitting at 9.5 runs and over, almost 10 and over. And so far, the AET Tuskers are moving along at just under 8 runs and over. Very evenly poised at this stage. tight into the body again of Michael Erlang and he tucks it into the leg side for a single. The work done by the midwicket who runs around to his left. Patrick Kruger throws the ball back to Nieland van Heerden. It would be interesting to see what impact Kruger would have on this match with ball in hand. Erlang gives himself a little bit of room, advances down the track and just beats the middle fielder Patrick Kruger. Ball races away to the long on boundary, long off boundary for four. Back to Patrick Kruger. A strong, broad-shouldered young man who can bowl heavy balls. 
and I think that would be invaluable to the Dafa Bet Warriors in their defence of this 174 today. Apologies, that was Kumalu who struck that ball through the offside, not Erlang. Kamalo gives himself room again. Nielen van Heerden sees him coming. He's left with no choice but to stick the bat out and run that ball down to third man. Kamalo, another single to his name. That takes him to 13. Michael Erlang on 8. 77 for 3. 9.3 overs bold. Adelang tries to hoik Van Heerden over the deep square boundary, but only manages a leg by through to the vacant square leg region where the wicket keeper Kleshile does the cleaning up. And another single added to the score of the AET Tuskers. And Van Heerden clean bowls Monli Kumalo as he tries to scoop, flick the ball over the head of the wicket keeper. Takes the top of his middle stump and middle stump is skittled out of the ground. Le leaves the Tuskers at 78 for four. Uh, Tamsangla Kumalo lost his wicket for 13 runs. He spent 20 minutes at the crease and he faced 13 balls. He'd be disappointed with himself. Apologies to the viewers. That was Tamsanga Kumalo who has lost his wicket. Into the crease comes Keith Dudgeon. He joins Michael Erlang who is currently on eight. He's got one ball left to face in the tenth over from Nielen van Heerden. Tentative push to the short catching cover by Keith Dudgeon, and that brings to an end the 10th over. No run scored off that last ball. 78 for four, 10 overs bowled. A.E. Tuskers. A.E.T. Tuskers require 97 runs to win in 10 overs. If you're good at maths, that means 9.7 runs to the over. They're currently going at just under eight and over. 7.8 runs and over to be exact. So Metu continues from the park drive end with his uh, left arm orthodox. And he's quite straight and full on that occasion and he's swept behind square for a single. For those of our viewers who are not quite certain what left arm orthodox means, it's simply a left arm off break bowler. It's a bowler who would simply be taking, spinning the ball away from the right-handed batsman and into the left-handed batsman. Sub submit to in, attacks the stumps, slightly flatter and quicker on that occasion. Dudgeon is up to the task and just defends it straight into the turf. No run on that occasion.
Sameetu pops one into the arc for Dudgeon. He duly obliges and uh, bludgeons him over long on for six. Looks like we might require another ball. Nope, the young man has found it. That's a very good cricket shot by Keith Dudgeon. Just relieves the pressure somewhat at this stage of the match. And takes his team through to 85. This time, hoiks him through to um, a cow corner who collects the ball on the bounce and the batters are through for a single. Adelanka attempts a sweep there, misses the ball, all ends up, no run. Sinekle Shile cleans up, pops the ball back to the bowler. Sumetu is back at the top of his mark and he's ready to bowl. Just a little shimmy down the track by Erlang. Scampers through for a leg by, and that brings to an end the 11th over. The AET Tuskers are currently on 87 for 4 after 11. This little period of play between overs number 7 and 10 is where the AET Tuskers are slightly behind the Warriors. The Warriors really accelerated during this period of time in their innings, didn't lose many wickets. And um, unfortunately for the AET Tuskers, that's where they're falling a little short at the moment. The band is currently entertaining us with a very soulful rendition of Old MacDonald had a farm. Patrick Kruger into the attack from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. Wraps the batter on the pad. Umpire signals leg by as they scamper through for a single. Very interestingly poised contest at the moment. The AET Tuskers require 87 runs in response to the Tafabed Warriors 174 for five. Keith Dudgeon backs away to the leg side. Patrick Kruger sees him, follows him, ball just didn't have any pace on it, couldn't get it away, no single there. Kruger once again, tight line. Ball is turned around the corner into the leg side where the keeper Klashile does the work and Dudgeon is off for a single. If these two can string together a bit of a partnership here, it'll really strengthen the cause of the, of the AET Tuskers in this run chase. As the Warriors showed, even though this is a T20 encounter you have to occupy the crease and play yourself in on this tough surface driven firmly aerially through to the middle fielder who takes it on the bounce no run
slight change in the field now for Kruger as he brings in his third man to a short third man and he pushes out his mid off to the boundary. Adelunk squeezes that one out to the deep mid wicket boundary for a single. Kruger has gone for one run in this over so far. Dots are going to prove to be very important as this game progresses. Kruger bangs one into the deck. Spalled what looks like a slower ball bouncer. And it's just miscued down to the fine leg boundary for a single. Sametu does the necessary. So Kruger has gone for two in his, in his first over. The AET Tuskers are currently on 91 for four, 12 overs bowled. One feels now that the momentum is shifting slightly in favor of uh, the Dafferbed Warriors, who are just going about their business quietly, systematically. Sumetu to bowl his last over from the park drive end. He's bowled well. Dudge into face. Oh. Dudgeon hits one straight over the head of Sumetu, evades him, and the ball races away to the straight boundary for four. It's a good cricket shot, safest place on the cricket field to hit the ball. Nice little dink into the offside where the extra cover fielder does the work. Dudgeon is through for a single. That's smart cricket. Got the boundary of the previous ball, of first ball of the over. Turn the strike over to the batter who's in. Adelunk reverse sweeps, attempts the reverse sweep, the ball hits him on the pad. There is a vociferous appeal, umpire not interested at all, much to the, much to the visible disappointment of Sine Kleshile. Adelunk advances. Plays a good little lofted drive through to Longon for a single. That moves him along to 11. Keith Dudgeon is currently on 13 and this partnership is worth 19. Lovely punch off the back foot. Sweeper's got a lot of work to do. And he has run out. Brilliant piece of fielding by the sweeper fielder. Had a lot of ground to cover. He picked the ball up. The throw was pinpoint. Dudgeon was always struggling. Pinpoint throw. And the keeper simply had to dislodge the bales. Excellent. And that brings to an end. Um, Keith Dudgeon's innings. He'd be disappointed in himself. Excellent fielding. Excellent fielding by Jordan Herman. Covered the ground quickly. Clean pickup. Throw in on the bounce. Excellent. Anything else would have had the wicket keeper looking straight into the sun. Right. That takes the AET Tuskers to 98 for 5. There's one ball left in the 13th over.
into the crease comes Kyle Nipper. He's on strike to face what should be the last ball of this, the 13th over from Sia Sumetu. Punches down the ground to the long on for what should be a regulation single. And that brings to an end the 13th over. 99 for 5 are the AET Tuskers in response to the Dalphabet Warriors 174 for 5. One has to say at this stage of the match, the momentum is firmly with the Dalphabet Warriors. But this is T20 cricket and anything can happen. Seven overs to go, 76 runs to win. The AET Tuskers have maintained quite a steady run rate in the vicinity of 7.6 to 7.8 to the over right through their innings. So they would back themselves and fancy themselves to take it deep. Patrick Kruger in for his second over. Rolls his finger over that delivery. Ball goes harmlessly through to the keeper on the bounce. Play and a miss by Kyle Nipper. Being the home team, one would have expected the Warriors to have done their homework on the playing surface and judging by how they are going about this match, they've done just that. Nipper punches the ball through to the vacant point region and he's off the mark with a single. That brings up 100 runs for the Tuskers. It's come off 84 balls. Ten boundaries have been hit, three of them maximums, seven of them fours. goes full and wide is driven down the ground long off does, long off does the work just a single to the left-handed Michael Erlang Outside edge from Adelang. Ball lobs into the vacant third man region. And they hurry back for two. So with each dot ball bowled at this stage of the game, that required run rate creeps up ever so slightly. And over ago, that required run rate was 10.9. It's now gone up to 11.4. Another slower ball from uh, Kruger. Once again, ball through to the keeper on the bounce, a play and miss by the new batter. Kyle Nipper sets up again. Full and wide again from Patrick Kruger. That ball is slapped down to the long on boundary for a single. That brings to an end the 14th over. AET Tuskers 104 for 5 in response to the Dafferbet Warriors 174 runs posted. The AET Tuskers require 71 runs to win at an economy rate of 11.8. Mm. Nielen van Heerden back into the attack from the park drive end. Mm. 
although the Tuskers have been going along at seven plus runs and over right through the innings, their batters never quite seemed in, which is perhaps an indication of the two-paced nature of the deck. Some balls you could hit through the line, others would hold up on you. Certainly the slower bowlers are doing a fantastic job of containing the Tuskers. Van Heerden is lofted through to long on, takes a comfortable catch, and that is the end of Kyle Nipper. Didn't trouble the scorers too much, and he departs for five. The AET Tuskers are 104 for six. One can now truly say the Warriors are on top in this encounter. Clearly a team who have just understood and played the conditions better up until this point today. The Warriors would be quite confident in their huddle there now, but they would know. Job half done. The Tuskers are a dangerous side. They've got fantastic cricketers. And this game is far from over. Into the crease comes Alindile Mshletwa. When it comes to the middle overs of, of this encounter, certainly a tale of, of two halves, where the Warriors kicked on and accelerated after the power play overs, the AET Tuskers have uh, struggled. They've lost wickets at regular intervals. They haven't quite played the conditions. And they find themselves in a spot of bother at the moment. Another lofted shot by the new batsman. Down to third man. And he's off the mark immediately. Uh, Alindile Mishetwa. Beautiful afternoon in Port Elizabeth at St. George's Park. As the shadows settle over the field. Adelank nearly gloves that ball through to um, the man at 45 on the leg side. Short fine leg for the purists out there. The ball traveled quite quickly to him. And there was no chance for the batters to run through for a single. Van Heerden strays. On the leg side, he's pulled down to whitish fine leg boundary, and lung through for two. Some good work done on the boundary there by Andile Mohakani. Another lofted on drive through to Longon. Adelang through for another single. And as the Warriors have stamped their authority on this game, the band seems to have kicked into second gear. 108 for six are the AAT Tuskers chasing 175 for victory. This is the last ball of the 15th over. Field change, cow corner goes out and in comes the fine leg. That's well bowled. Beautifully bowled by Van Heerden. Unfortunately, it evades the man 
at a whitish third man as uh, the batter squirts the ball out down to that third man boundary for a much needed boundary that takes the AAT Tuskers to 112 for 6, 15 overs bold. And the band have now succeeded in getting some of the fans involved. St. George's Park Band is definitely awake now. And into the attack comes Alfred Matua again from the Duck Pond Pavilion end where he was quite successful in his first spell. Went for only eight runs in his two overs and took a wicket. He will look to emulate that in his second spell. And he's into Erlang for the first ball of his third over. Erlang flat bats that ball straight down to Longon, who takes it on the bounce. And the ball is back into the field, uh, to the bowler. And he's already at the top of his mark to take his next delivery. Warriors have a job to do, and they seem to be getting on with it. That ball is flicked into the leg side. Cow Corner comes off the boundary and does his job. The band is now firmly behind Alfred Matua. Alfred, your lekker ding. That takes the AT Tuskers to 114 for six. Four balls left, and this is the 16th over. That is a fantastic drive down to the long on. Adlan gets another single that takes him to 17. Clear frustration from Michael Adlan in that he's just not able to pierce this field and get some much needed boundaries for his team. Brilliantly fielded by Mutua of his own bowling. That ball was struck firmly back to him by uh, Mufletwa. Setwa dinks that delivery into the offside to the vacant cover region and he's through for an easy single. The momentum that the, war the Duffer Bed Warriors have built up over the last five to six overs has certainly rubbed off on the band. It's a firm hit down to the long on boundary where Patrick Kruger does the work. Michael Erlang through for a single. That brings to an end the 16th over here at St. George's Park. The total of the AET Tuskers is currently 117 for six in response to the Darfur Bet Warriors 174 for five. Mountain to climb right now for the Tuskers. Run rate required now sitting at 14.5 runs and over. Partnership is worth 13. Uh, the AET Tuskers will definitely need somebody to kick on right now. As is the nature of T20 cricket, it's not over till it's over. Patrick Kruger back into the attack. This time from the park drive end. It's certainly been a ploy by both captains today to rotate their bowlers from, from, from both ends at St. George's Park.
ball is hit straight down the throat of long on and it's a good clean catch by the long on fielder and that brings to an end the innings of Michael Erlank if it wasn't the case before it certainly is the case now the AET Tuskers are in heaps of trouble uh, Brietzky taking a good clean catch on the boundary Certainly a very interesting ploy by both captains to rotate the ends that their bowlers are bowling from. Into the crease comes Kirtle and Manicum. Him and his partner Alindile Mshetwa will have to score at a brisk 15.1 runs and over to win this match. It certainly has been an afternoon of excellent cricket by both teams. The Warriors have just dominated the middle overs of their bowling innings um, as they did their batting innings as well. Field change now for the new batter. Square leg fielder moved across over into the offside. Moved to the cover. Oh, where? Okay. So he's moved to an orthodox point position from the leg side. We have a deep backward point and a sweeper as well as an orthodox point. Interesting. Patrick Kruger gets it slightly wrong as he looks to go full and straight on that wide line. And that one's just outside the wide line. Very clear what the plan is here with the orthodox point, the deep backward point, or a very, very straight third man, if we could put it that way, as well as the sweeper quite straight out on the boundary. Hit me to the long side of the boundary is what Patrick Kruger is saying to the batsman. And, and he obliges, dissects both fielders beautifully, what looks like a maximum. Umpire signals four. Some really good cricket. Patrick Kruger looking to hit that wide line on the full. Batsman obliged, slicing in between the sweeper and our deep backward point. Far over the head of our orthodox point. Well, bold Patrick Kruger, that's a slower ball. Certainly got the better of the batter who tried to play that across the line. Patrick Kruger gets it slightly wrong again, this time much tighter than the previous wide, but still a wide nonetheless. It's just not executed well on that occasion on his attempt to go full and wide, to go that Yorker length on the wide line. The plan is simple. It's just about the execution, isn't it? This time he gets it, he gets it right. <clears throat> and that ball is slashed through to our uh, deep backward point fielder for a single. With the point, with the orthodox point in position, that deep backward point fielder is quite unorthodox. But of course the slow nature of the surface, Patrick Kruger being a 
a slightly slower or medium pace bowler, it makes complete sense. That's the plan and we're sticking to it. Oh, he gets it. Oh, interesting call by the umpire. He obviously feels that the batter had moved and that he's not called a wide. Even though that ball is outside the wide line, umpire has adjudicated that the batter has moved from his normal position. Good call, umpire. Another ball full and on that wide line by Patrick Kruger. Uh, ball is hit firmly to the point fielder. No run there. That brings to an end the 17th over. The Duffabet Warriors firmly on top here. The AET Tuskers have it all to do. They require another 51 runs in 18 deliveries. Simply put, at 17 runs and over. Alfred Matua to Manicum, who advances and places the ball well between the cow corner fielder and the long on. Long on has quite a bit of work to do to his right. Manicum through for two runs. Good cricket all round. The band has certainly gotten the modest crowd up on their feet. Manikam advances and edges that ball through to the short third man uh, who fumbles at it and allows Manikam through for another single. Well executed slower bouncer by Matua. Even though the batter had advanced, the square leg umpire was comfortable that that would have been above shoulder height. And uh, Matua has bowled his one shoulder height bouncer for the over. Well spotted, Mr. Square leg umpire. In the meantime, the batters have run through for two. That is a leg side wide. Matua tried to follow the batter down the leg side and unfortunately got it wrong on this occasion. Perhaps a bit of cat and mouse between him and the batter. Alindile Mishetwa. Mishetwa backs away to the leg side again. Matua opts for length, trying to hit the top of off stump and Mishletua plays and misses. 130 for 7 are the AET Tuskers. With 14 legal deliveries left to score 45 runs. Mishletua pulls Matua into the, off, into the leg side for a single. Fielding done by the deep mid-wicket fielder. Warriors now looking to just wrap this up. <clears throat> Ooh, and the bat flies. 
Manikam tries to scoop the ball and in so doing throws his bat through towards the uh, man at 45 on the leg side. His bat was returned by Sumetu. No harm, no foul, no hard feelings, no runs either. And that brings to an end the 18th over. 44 required of 12 balls, simple equation. 22 runs and over, and you win the match, AET Tuskers. Darfur Bet Warriors restrict the AET Tuskers to 21 runs or less in the next two overs, and you win the game. Van Heerden from the park drive end to Mishletwa. That is a wide, no doubt about that. The ploy from the park drive end by the Warriors is very, very clear, very simple. Bowl it full and wide, make the batter play them to the far side, of the, to the big side of the boundary of the field. The execution has just, was just off on that occasion by Nielen van Heerden. And he strays into the legs. And that is just through the hands of the fielder at that straightish deep mid-wicket or cow corner. And that is a maximum. Picked up off the legs by Mshletwa. Excellent cricket shot. Nielen van Heerden, you can't stray there again. Ooh. And that is a waist high full toss. There might be a warning in it here for the bowler. Not at all. Umpires don't deem it to be dangerous. And there will be a free hit. And there's a play and a miss. Van Heerden opted to go full and straight on that occasion. And on that occasion, he was just too good for Mshetwa, who played and missed. And Nilan van Heerden runs out Mshetwa as he tries to make good his ground after playing the ball straight back to the bowler but he's injured himself in the process it looks like that is a hamstring that has been pulled or tweaked i'm not sure the bowler in executing the run out was aware of that and the medics are on the field This is an excellent show of sportsmanship here where the bulk of the Warriors fielders are concerned and showing their concern around the injured, the injured Alindile Mishetwa. In my observations of the two teams interacting with each other before the game, the spirit of cricket is very much alive in this encounter. Well done to these two teams. Mishetwa seems to have uh, injured himself quite badly. He's now being helped off the field by uh, teammates or staff from the AET Tuskers. We wish him a speedy recovery. Tando and Tini is now in. He joins Manikam at the crease. 
these two have got it all to do. Nine balls left, 36 runs required. Simple equation, four runs per ball. Fielders are in position. Captain and bowler having a brief conversation. And Tando and Tini is on strike. In comes Nilan van Heerden to the new batter who is Tando and Tini. Van Heerden with a good slower bouncer. Beats and Tini all ends up. Ball through to the keeper on the bounce. The slower ball bouncer has really become a hallmark of death bowling. He backs it up with another one, and the result is exactly the same. That pushes the required rate up to 27. One ball left to come in this, the 19th over. Well-directed bouncer. Ntini does well to get the ball. Half pull it through to the fielder at uh, deep backward square leg for a single. And Ntini is back on strike. 140 for 8 are the AET Tuskers in response to the Darfabet Warriors. 174 for 5. 35 runs to win. Six balls left. Simple equation. Hit six sixes in this over and you win the match. Bayer Swanepoel back into the attack to bowl the last ball, uh, to bowl the last over, and he will do so from the Duck Pond Pavilion end. He's coming around the wicket to a left handed Tando and Tini. Closing out this match for the Warriors now should just be a formality. Just bowl six legal deliveries, Mr. Swanepoel. And he starts well, full and wide. Tando and Tini is not up to the task this time. Ball goes through to the keeper. And Tini now asking for guard on off stump. He understands the ploy that the bowlers are implementing. Full and wide. Get across, cover that off stump, get closer to the line of the ball, Mr. Antini. Gentle full toss, and Tando Antini holds out to Matthew Brietsky at extra cover. There. That fielder is not sure if that ball has carried to him on the full. However, Tando Antini seems to be making his way off the field off the park nonetheless from where we are sitting that looked like a clean catch and the ninth wicket of the AET Tuskers has fallen some would say perhaps a bit lucky for Bayer Swanepoel not his best delivery that he would ever bowl and take a wicket on. Low full toss. The tail ender and Tini mistimed that ball and it ended up in the safe hands of Matthew Brietsky. And into the crease comes Mbulelo Budaza. 
in terms of stats, a tail ender, and he'll look to close out this game for his team, the AET Tuskers. Victory now seems improbable. Bayer Swanepoel changes his angle of attack. He's now over the wicket to the right-hander. Budaza plays and misses awkwardly at that. Excellent take down the leg side by Q. Daza swings at that and hits it out on the bounce to Patrick Kruger at long on. Two balls remain, two legal deliveries remain in this match. Another play and a miss by Manikam. Last ball of this match. There's been some good cricket on display today from both teams. The Warriors clearly the strongest, the stronger team between the two. They executed to their plans brilliantly. And this match ends with Two runs down to the vacant fine leg region. And that brings to an end a very entertaining clash between the AET Tuskers and the Dafabet Warriors at St. George's Park, Port Elizabeth. Excellent win by the table topping Dafabet Warriors. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend further to all our viewers. Thank <laughs> you.